first time at a major. It will be Alcaraz and Djokovic. Oh, no way! That was impossible! Alcaraz's body is not quite at the level of Djokovic's. Couldn't hold up when he needed it most. Alcaraz slays the legend to win his first Wimbledon title. And at just 20 years of age, how many more will there be? What a moment. It doesn't get any better than this. Incredible skills. Oh, look at the hands. Has Novak Djokovic ever had to dig deeper than that? One of the most physical battles, full of drama. I don't know that the hype could have been overstated for this one. Mm. The new hot rivalry in tennis is just four matches in. Two wins apiece. One and one in finals. One and one in majors. One and one in masters events. Average match time for these four matches. Only two have been in majors. Nearly four hours. Time to delve into the game within the game. So, we're, we're a few matches away, but, and, and I know, Paul, that, that you're kind of biased in this one, and the fact that, like, Taylor Fritz plays Novak Djokovic, so <laughs> you can't really say that this is going to be inevitable, but uh, what do you think? No, the seeds play out. That's what everyone's looking for, right? That's what all the tennis fans around the world are looking for, another Novak uh, Alcaraz epic already, only just four matches in in their, in their career. For me, it's about who gets into that last match in the best physical and mental shape. And, and when you see what these guys have done through so many of their matches, this was a problem right here, 2023. Two sets in, and Alcaraz started to cramp in Paris. And uh, that was a sign that maybe it's probably about nerves. So then what happens when we get to the grass courts at the All England Club? Not hot, not humid, not muggy, but that man handled the pressure unbelievably well. There is no pressure like that on the face of the earth in, in tennis, and he did a great job. And then here in, here in Cincinnati, these guys, how do you play three sets that long? Talk about this. The Cincinnati final, you know, it's a Sunday night match before the U.S. Open. This felt like a major final. Novak's ripping his shirt. They're rocking across the net. The emotions on both sides. You don't think both of these two guys, they may be 16 years apart in age, you don't think both of these two guys are warming to this rivalry and realize what a great test the other poses. Yeah, I think that's one of the more phenomenal parts about this rivalry in its early stages is the age difference, the gap between these two. And yet, from almost the first match, it has been just a <laughs> knockout, drag out, you know, everything thrown at each other. It's been phenomenal. And, and I can't imagine what is to come. I mean, if they are able to play uh, in another final here in the U.S. Open, I mean, there may be some players that have something to say about that. But it has been tremendous so far. You know, the one thing I want to add one thing. But the one thing that's really most exciting to me as a tennis fan is you see Djokovic, who has been in an era with two other all-time greats, three other all-time greats, Andy Murray as well, and Stan Wawrinka, multiple major winner. And now he gets this young guy, mm -hmm. and he has to adjust. after. And I think for great players, after being fortunate enough to be around Pete Sampras and Roger Federer, they look forward to different challenges. So they're not afraid to win or lose. They're not afraid about their ego. They're not afraid about their legacy. They need things like this to thrive on and to push them. And that's exactly what Novak is getting. So he's not afraid of it. He's embracing it. He may lose some. He may win some. But this actually rejuvenates him, which I think is a good and I, thing. I think the other side, too. I mean, the hot, hot take here, they both recognize the tennis history at play here for Novak what a demonstration that he can say, listen, it wasn't just Rafa and Roger I had a good head-to-head -head against. This 16-year-old guy was 16 years older than this kid who would go on to become a Hall of Famer and look how well I did. And I think also Algaraz, he recognizes this too. Look, I got a chance to match up against 23-time major winner and hold my own, take him down at Wimbledon. What does this do for me? So I think you have these echo two guys at very different stages of their career, but I think they both realize... History special. echoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they feed off of one another, and they push one another to greatness. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape this year, what they've both accomplished, which is just remarkable. I mean, 10 combined titles. 
obviously the three majors they're just eating those up the, the records against the top 10 Djokovic actually is number one in the world right now but Alcaraz number one in the race to try and do what Pete Sampras did right I mean because this he needs to finish number one I think now right because he did it last year this would be second in a row Pete still holds the record of six straight years finishing number one in the world but Novak could prevent that and if he does this year I don't know Carlitos has another chance to do it in the future yeah flip yeah flip-flopping those around right, right. right. You, and, and Novak has a chance to break the all-time record and and Carlitos could actually knock him off the mantle which yeah. would and like you said I think so much of this has so many different layers and you look at those numbers what's even more astounding is Novak is tapering his schedule he's played 16 17 mm. less matches this right. year than Carlito so he knows exactly what he needs to do sure he wants to finish number one but from my experience, I don't think that's going to be the top right. of his priority list. The top of his priority list is how well does he prepare so that he gets to tournaments like this and can still win. And guess what? At the end of the day, the people that I've been around say, if I win a couple majors at the end of the year, let the rankings be right. what they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, I mean, you look at, you know, the tail of the tape, you look at those numbers, and that'd be a career for most <laughs> players. And you look at, that's just 2023 for these two. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. And, you know, you look at what is not able to be put on that graphic, and that's the experience of Novak Djokovic, his understanding of how he needs to prepare, what he needs to do in so many of these types of matches. Carlos Alcaraz, he's just kind of in the early stages, even though he is already so good. Uh, so we'll see how much that continues to come into play, especially uh, if they are able to meet again this season uh, on, on this big stage. But it's just incredible when you look at the comparison of, the, of these two. And again, so many years separating them, but you see Alcaraz right on that track. Remember Sesame Street brought to you by a number? Can we just yeah. do your periodic <laughs> reminder? <laughs> brought to you by the number 24. In addition to everything we've been talking about, the all-time male and female major record for majors is in play here. Yeah. To just, you know, game this out. Imagine if Novak Djokovic, five-set defeat at Wimbledon, we had this dramatic match. Imagine if he comes back to the subsequent major, takes out the same opponent that took him down, and oh yeah, in the process, ties the all-time leader for majors one um that would be a storyline it, it would be a huge storyline but and that's such a great point that you look at that board and those are two hall of fame careers In and one that's year. one, one season <laughs> for each one that, that's Mind blown right there. Two wins away from a potential meeting in the final at the U.S. Open. Alcaraz Djokovic.